than most of you do. Um, we'll start off tonight by covering some e upcoming events with Carl Pockers. All right. All right. How many, uh, well, we've got a light crowd tonight. How many, this is the first time they've been here today? Got a couple. Okay. This is regular stuff. So no. on the seven sixers uh, net, we, uh, we always uh, uh, announce any upcoming nets and upcoming things that are going on besides uh, going on with the club and things like that. So this is really redundant because we've been going through this one for a couple months. But let's see, I think it's not there. Here we go. Very close, September 10th, to the yearly ice cream social. We do it at uh, the Leatherbees in Orem, which is uh, right down on University Parkway. If some of you know where the old uh, Village Inn was, uh, uh, we do it down there, and we do it at 1 p.m., which is, gives people a time to eat lunch and come have dessert or whatever. And we usually have a, a pretty large crowd there, have a lot of fun. But Leatherbees, Orem, and uh, 304 East, Park, uh, East University Parkway, it's on the south side of, of uh, University Avenue over there. So, uh, let's see, what else is going on here? Oh, it looks like it's September 24th. Oh, man. How many can you make I'm going to be lucky if I get there. I'm on call that weekend. I'm going to see what I can do to be, about being there. Anyway, September 24th, 9 a.m. to noon. This is our little annual fundraiser. Most of you know that we don't charge dues in this club. And the reason we don't is because we put together fundraisers and things like that. And this is one of them. Uh, right by Costco, which is right off the freeway at Main Street in... in um, uh, Spanish Fork is called the North Park Pavilion, and it looks like they're going to do an exam session there as well. It's just they open it up and we have to do a big swap meet there. I don't see the details on it, but I think what do you charge? We charge five bucks. Oh for? yeah, it's yeah, five bucks to get in, ten bucks for a table. Five bucks to get in, ten bucks for a table. Bring all your junk and sell it to everybody else so that they can come sell it next year. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, that's all I got. Looks like, Michelle, you're up. Oh, do I have to hit the arrow? There you go. Michelle. I am up. You're up. Hey, sweet, I can get a quick nap in. Watch it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle. Um, I guess I'm doing activities today. It's not Wendy Jr. Okay, Ham Radio oh, University is at BYU Law School from 9, 10, and 11, three different classes. Um, UVARC annual DIY night, Thursday, November at 6 p.m., Orms Senior Friendship Building, which is just right up the street from us. And then, Yoshi. You did great, thank you, Michelle. Okay, so um, we've got a couple of exam sessions coming up here, um, Saturday, September 17th, uh, Wednesday 21st, um, both at the law school building. I know that Dayton Carr is also having a, an exam session, but I don't know where and when that is. And um, he's really good about texting and so forth, but when I last got hold of him, he wasn't able to answer, so I don't know when his will be over in Eagle Mountain. So go ahead, please. 30 October. First Saturday. first Saturday in October? Second Saturday in October. Second Saturday in October. So say like first Saturday, that's right in the middle of general conference. How dare you, right? <laughs> no. Okay, anyway, so second Saturday in October, very good. All right, thanks for the info. <laughs> Who would turn a ham radio on in the middle of ham club meeting? <laughs> All right, we also have a technician course starting up here. Um, on, in, in fact, David, Dave's got a, a, a course going on right now in Eagle Mountain, by the way. So this one starts um, September 20th. Please get the word out to your peoples. We only have like 11 people, I think, signed up for the current one. But it starts September 20th, 6.30, over at um, the Orem Police Station, which is the next building over here. And uh, most of you should be very familiar with that place. <laughs> so on um, 95 East Center Street. <laughs> To um, sign up for that course, um, I forgot to put a link up here, but just go to PS class, which stands for Public Safety Class, 
www.warren.org. But um, even if you're already um, uh, licensed, you're welcome to come and attend that class. In fact, every time we have one of these classes, it seems like there's probably 10 to 15 percent of the people who attend are already licensed, and they just want to come back and learn about what it was that they just got through memorizing and testing about. So, kind of found that. Um, oh yeah, one thing I also wanted to mention too about. Michelle's thing when she brought up, no, it was Carl's. So the swap meet, by the way, if you, I should have put this thing down in the link here, but if you want to know more about the swap meet, the map, the link, the time, and the cost and so forth, just go to utahvalleyswapmeet.com. utahvalleyswapmeet.com, all one word, except the dot. And there you go. Next up is Sean. All right, for those that don't know me, I'm Sean Hatfield, KJ7SNE. I'm here to tell you today about all of our new hams for the month. And if you look, we have had a lot. And I believe, nope, just that one. Anybody that is our new hams, if you'll stand up if you're here, anybody? I don't I'll give my hand anyway. Yeah, we got to give them all a hand. We've been through it. It's, yeah, it's a lot of work. These are our upgrades, and anybody part of the upgrades in here this time? We had just four. No, let's give them a hand. All right, thank you very much. All right, it's election time. <laughs> we get to do this every year. Let's go, Brandon. Um, okay. How many, okay. How many? How many people were? This was their first time here tonight. All right. I would like um, Noji stand up. Noji is running for president. Thank you. Chad, would you stand up? Chad is running for vice president. Um, Karen's not here, but she's running for secretary. Michelle, she just did a wonderful job announcing the activities. She's running for the activities coordinator. And Trevor is running for technology specialist. Nobody is running opposed. <laughs> Unless somebody would like to run. Anybody? Okay, well then to make this go a little bit quicker, all those who would like to continue with these people as our uh, officers, Club officer, raise your hand. Here is speech. <laughs> no speech. Anybody opposed? Raise your hand. All right, you guys, you're in for. You can't do that. <laughs> you're, in, you're in for another year. All right, you guys, thank you very much. All right, very good. We knew this was going to be quick, and so. I decided that I would put together a little presentation to entertain everybody. And um, this, and I, you know what I did though? This last month on Ham Radio University, I decided to do this presentation just to kind of, a, uh, you know, to do a dry run to check it out. And, uh, and Ryan was there, bless his heart. He endured through the whole thing. And I think it turned out well enough that I was able to flesh out a lot of the bugs in that presentation. So I'm going to re-present it here. So. I just want to talk a little bit about solar power because I, wait a minute, Alan Alma said there was no, going to be no speech. Sorry, this is a speech. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> Nothing to do with election, but anyway, I get lots of questions all the time about solar power and, you know, what to buy, how to connect stuff up, what kind of, what size of battery do I get, where do I buy these connectors from? You know, do I get this size of panel or this? Is this going to be adequate for my needs for portable or how about my house? Many, many questions. And, and it's because I think solar is new enough that many people are just, they, they don't know a lot of ins and outs about how to do solar power. And I'm not going to drag this out either, so I'm going to make this a real condensed version. In fact, we've got a lot of time left in this meeting, and I'm not going to take that time up by blabbing the whole time. So I'm expecting, I'm not the kind of person that 
Well, you know me. That says, you know, any questions? Any questions? Because I know you do have questions, and when you do, just blurt them out. I don't want to see your armpit. Just, just say them, okay? So just let me know um, if you have any questions. So getting into solar, and, and I brought a few toys with me so we can kind of play with them and kind of see what they're about. Anyway, so, oops. Let me get out of that one. I'm in the wrong. Presentation, there we are. Yay, solar power. Now, as you know, solar power has many applications, and there's many places that we use solar, as you know. Um, anywhere that there's sunlight, is there any place that doesn't have sunlight? Alaska's having trouble with that. Alaska, in a few months, I'll be dug deeply in, you know, yeah, into darkness. My shed doesn't have a whole lot of sunlight, but okay. So most places that do, you can use solar stuff. It's becoming more universal. People want to use solar power because, I mean, it's free energy, right? Well, maybe not so much free. I mean, once you pay for all the thousands of dollars in equipment to get there, then it's free, I guess. But even then, there's you've got to pay for things like you know um, replacing your batteries because if you don't replace them every few years, why? Like, so anyway, there's a, there's a cost involved. It's not as free as people like to think it is. Just because the sun is there doesn't mean it's all free. Anyway, but it is becoming less expensive, and that's good. Now, it requires just, we're just going to cover the basics. I'm not going to go into any heavy physics or details, but it requires three things. One's your towel, one's a charge controller, and one is a battery. Those three things are the very minimum things you need, along with cabling. I mean, you've got to have some way to connect these, these all together. Hey, no, do you have a question? Can I have a question over here from the gallery? Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, what is the charge controller for? We'll get to that. Okay. And that's to control how much money you get from people who want to pay you for this stuff. But in the meantime, it is to help you to make sure that you don't overcharge your battery, but other kinds of things too. So. I, I was legitimately curious. No, absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I'll try not to use any more of my humor. <laughs> so, anyway. nah, I deserve it. It's all good. True. Yeah, I agree. Now, we'll, we'll get into that for sure. Um, especially, you know, there, there's different kinds of controllers and different kinds of batteries, too. I'm gonna, I'll mention that, again, without boring you with a lot of detail. But these are the three basic things, and these are the three things that's gonna cost the most. Some people will say, wait a minute, we're missing one ingredient, and that, that is, don't, don't you wanna have some way maybe to charge your battery when there's no sunlight, like maybe you're using commercial power? Yeah, yeah, you can. If you wanna attach like a power supply to this whole setup, to do commercial power charging this thing up. When there's no sunlight, you can do that too. So I did um, you know, omit that. That's really not part of our discussion. I didn't want to mention that because it's not truly a solar solution. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm doing. And by the way, I'm not a solar power expert, okay? I'm only t t teaching you stuff this. I'm not teaching you anything, okay? You're, you already know this. I'm sharing with you what I do at my house. There, there's nothing you're gonna learn new here. It's just uh, all about what Noji does at home and what I do on the road. Because I love to do portable. I love to take my time radio and go way out in the middle of nowhere, set up stuff, and you know, be able to work off the sun. And it does seem to work. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So there's a couple different types of solar cells you should be aware of. One is silicon. Uh, this is the most common type. If you look around on people's houses and places, silicon is the number one most um, common type. It's about 16% efficient. And when I say efficient, that means compared with the amount of energy coming from the sun versus the electrical energy coming from the panel, as about 16% of that gets transmitted, trans, well, conducted into electricity. Is that like an average? Because I don't know my solar power at home, you know, in the morning it doesn't get doesn't power, but you know, high noon it's like 7,000 kilowatts. Right, and they do depend depending on whether you're going by, you know, cloud cover, direct sunlight, and so forth, and also the different kinds of um, solar types as well. So, yep, absolutely. Um, polycrystalline is um, very common on homes too. It's a little more efficient, about 18%. Uh, it's a lot more expensive, but you'll find more and more businesses use polycrystalline. A very nice type of uh, solar panel. Hey, no, what do you mean by the uh, 18 or 60 percent effect efficient? So in other words, uh, as compared to the amount of energy coming from the sun versus how much energy that solar panel is converting into electricity. Now monocrystalline is what I have in my house because, well, 
my house is cool. But because besides that, it, it is the most expensive type of panel, so I don't have a whole lot. And it, it is about 23% efficient. That's about as good as you're going to get. Some manufacturers brag about 25%. I even heard a, a manufacturer brag 30%, but I'm a little skeptical about that one. So I want to look into it maybe and when the price comes down and kind of check that out. Anyway, it is, it is becoming more available, but it is the most expensive. Now, thin film is a very, very common one that people don't even, can't even notice it's around them. For instance, um, like this is a little solar bank I have here. This thing I got uh, for next to nothing from Fox Ellie, and uh, this little guy here promises to charge my cell phone. So it's got a little um, battery bank right here, plus some solar. <coughs> Panels, just little tiny things, okay? And so these aren't any of the big giant poly or even the silicon type um, of solar panels. These are thin film. And so this is very small, um, quite, quite inefficient, but it does the job, okay? If you get this in the sun all day long, you can eventually charge your phone. I've kind of killed my phone down to like 5%, trying to charge this up, but by the end of the day, it's brought up to like 20%. So it's not perfect, but you know, it seems to help a little bit, so it's better than nothing. What, what kind of lifespan can you expect out of these different types? So, Chad's asking about lifespan for different kinds of solar types here. I can tell you that long crystal ones will last you for 50 years. Okay, maybe not. We haven't even had them around for 50 years to know for sure, but I've had the long crystal in my house for 15 years without any problem. Um, I know people that have had polycrystalline, They've had it for 20 years, still works great like the day they got it. So the honest answer is I don't know because I don't even know if we exceeded the lifetimes of some of these things yet. Now some of these smaller ones here, like this calculator I got from Office Depot has a little tiny thin film um, solar thing here that I charge with this light. The good thing about it is it's not very efficient, but it can use really dim light in here. And this thing, I've had this for you know 20 some odd years. Thor? I'm oh, sorry. Seth? It looks just so much like you. Uh, my, what I've read, Longcrystal and Polycrystal are most reliable. Uh, thin film are less reliable. They're also less expensive, and they're also more actively researched. So, so um, um, Seth is saying that um, he's found out that poly and monocrystal are tend to be more reliable, and thin film less reliable. And, and I, I don't know. That's that, what I've read. And your experience is probably better than mine on that, so I'm glad you contributed. Thank you, Seth. And then, and then um, um, uh, Taylor, and then um, Carly. So solar panels are rated for the amount of efficiency that they will have over a certain amount of lifespan. So like if you were to buy a 100-watt solar panel, for example, it might say in 15 years it's guaranteed to be to still have 98% of its original efficiency. Okay, that's good to know. So that's kind of the thing you want to look at as, because they will degrade over time, but they do have that warranty and information should be available for you. So, um, so not a percentage, they, they still remain after so many years. So that kind of a rating. Okay, very good. See, I didn't even know that. That's very good. Thank you, Taylor. And then Harley and then Dave Daly. Did you have your hand up, Harley? Just scratching? I know it's itchy in here, sorry. Daly, go ahead. Did anybody see that program last week on television about solar cells? They can print them now on glass. They can print them on, supposedly, in the future, they can print them on a car, on, on a regular body. Uh, and they are somewhat efficient at this point. But the, the research that they're doing uh, tells me that you don't want to buy anything for another 10 years. Okay, so, so Dalen is saying that there's all kinds of, there's new technology where you can print them on cars and glass and that sort of thing. So I did not know that either. So thank you and for that. And shingles. And they're all saying on shingles. And shingles yeah. Good, good. You look at what Tesla did, it's not necessarily efficient, nor is it successful, but I think it's still kind of cool. You look at what Tesla did with their solar roof. You know, people are having to replace their roofs after 30, 30 plus years. So what they did is they took a, a roof tile and they made it into a solar panel. And so your, your roof is now literally nothing but solar panels. So a vehicle roof, they convert it into a solar panel. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean, granted, it's not, they had zero success at it, but I mean, it, there was, when, once you got out in your house, it was successful, but they made zero money off of it. But. Very good, very good. So there's, there's a lot of things I don't know about solar. I'm glad you guys are talking about it because, you know, there's things I could learn that, 
Maybe I'll get into someday too. Now, um, some of these thin films, by the way, are like in your proximity detectors. People walking by your house, they'll turn your light on and so forth. Some of them are by IR and sound, um, but there are also other kinds of films involved that, in that when you have light. Um, phone chargers, like I showed you, small lights and calculators. Um, with your very biggest key to your whole solar setup is going to be your charge controller. And that charge controller is a must. And I absolutely insist that when you get a solar panel, that you have a good charge controller. And that's a place where you should really invest good money. Panels are good, and it looks like, you know, batteries, you got to put money into that. But where your key is going to be is your charge controller. It helps regulate your voltage, it controls the current, and adjusts to the type of battery that you have. Many charge controllers are smart enough to know whether you have it, you know, if it's an, an AGM or, you know, sing, you know um, uh, sealed lead acid, you know, or some other kind of battery, you know, uh, lithium polymer. And th those charge controllers are smart enough to adjust to the voltage amount and then stepping down, how much it's going to flow and so forth. So it knows all those things about your battery type, if it's a good controller. Um, it, you can get a cheaper controller, and that's okay, depending on what your needs are. Um, you can run it all the time. The, the two biggest types are the PWN and the MPPT, the, the pulse width modulation and the maximum PowerPoint transfer type. But there's one more, and I'm going to show you that one here in a second. That's a simple voltage regulator type, which has a limited application. Go ahead, Doug. I'd say that not all charge controllers are ham friendly. Not all charge controllers are ham friendly. That is so true. In fact, I've got a kind of a few of them here to try out that some of them are more challenging than others, and I'll show you why. Thanks, that's a good, good comment. All right. Some other? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Carl. Uh, he says adjust a battery type. It'll all, the, you can also buy them for a single battery or for multiple batteries. And, and so you got to buy, you don't want to gain a whole bunch of batteries up on, a, on one that's designed for a single battery. You want to, you know, and, but they're not that expensive. Uh, and they may look expensive, but I've seen them, on, I've seen them online for 8, 10, 12, 15 bucks. I mean, you can pay more for them, but I mean, they're, they're not expensive. That's right. Some charge controllers are, are very inexpensive, and, and you can get away with dirt cheap with them. And you still do a great job depending on what kind of battery you want to connect it to and how. That's a good point. Um, I recommend you never connect your panel to a battery without a charge controller. And I mean, I, I really do say never, okay? Your, your, your panel is going to put out a voltage. Um, it, it's got two ratings, basically, okay? Your panel has an open circuit voltage rating, and that open circuit voltage, depending on how much light it's getting, can be anywhere from 13 volts to 50 volts. If I look at my monocrystalline at home, it's on a roof right now, when it's getting kind of dim out there, okay, I'm seeing the voltage drop clear down to like, you know, 12 volts. And, and yet when it's bright sunlight, it goes up to like 47 volts. <coughs> Excuse me. And you don't, you don't want to, you know, to subject any battery to that kind of panel because when you do that, you can destroy your battery or worse. Um, and I've done it before, not on purpose. Anyway, so you don't, don't connect your panel ever to a battery without a controller. And don't connect controllers to each other. Your controller is going to be very smart, but most of them aren't that smart. There are a few MPPT type controllers that are very expensive that you can control or can connect multiple controllers to each other. Unless you're rich, don't even go there. Just take my word, do not connect different <coughs> charge controllers to each other. Just one controller to one or more panels. Now here's a kind of a overview about a PWM controller. Um, the thing about it is it's, it's less expensive, and so you tend to pay a lot less for a PWM controller, but it's a lot less, ex uh, lot less um, efficient too, depending on what you've got going. If your battery is near where, where it should be charged already, then your PWM can be very efficient, because if you're just always topping off your battery and barely using your battery at any time, then PWM is a big way to go, because you never need to do much charging, the inefficiency is you're never going to see it, and it's always going to do the great job. So if you're just using a little bit of battery, you're good to go. And, and that's the case when you're trying to do an application like you know, just running off of you know, a small radio or you know, doing a, a, an application that doesn't require much current. Carl? i trying to keep my armpit lost. Um, <laughs> I can smell it from here. It was, um, a little deceptive there in a way because 
Uh, most people would look at that light bulb and think it's uh, regular incandescent light bulb. That's DC. Yes, that's, that's correct. It's DC. Yeah, this is it's a DC load, and so it's not an AC load. Uh, that's definitely DC. In fact, the whole thing we're talking about here is it's DC. DC. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you very much. That's, that is a good point, and that's an important thing because pump panels only put out DC, and your charge controller is only going to take DC. So yep, yeah, very good point. Yes, that load. Converters are a whole another subject. All right, and um, so again, you know, here's the one on the left whose you know battery was depleted a little bit more than the one on the right. That's why you had a lot, um, you know, no, other way around. The one on the right was depleted more, so you have a little more loss there. But at any rate, so so they tend to be a little more, a um, little less efficient, but it's a little less expensive too. The MPPT, which stands for Maximum Power Point Transfer, I won't get into the science of why they call it that. Okay, just understand that. They, they make it kind of like a switching power supply so that it's always going to give you the most current at the right time and, and be able to you know, do a really bang up job. So it's very, very efficient. In fact, no matter how you connect, how depleted your batteries are, how you connect your panels, you're going to have almost no loss of this. But MPVTs tend to be a lot more expensive. They too are coming down in price. If you're going to have uh, a charge controller for your house, for instance, I recommend getting an MPPT charge controller, uh, regardless of the cost, because it's going to serve you and you're going to be depleting that battery quite often. So that's what I would recommend. Now, you'll notice that that mentioned over here was uh, the load. That, uh, Carl was talking about the, the, the lights that are connected to the load on the charge controller. So what you want to do is, when you have a load, and load I'm talking about something that uses or consumes that electricity, like your radio, a light, um, your computer, whatever you want to connect to it that you need to power, okay, always connect it to the load part of your charge controller. So you can see this back of this charge controller here, the Sunsaver 10, has three ports, um, you know, two connectors each. You know, two connectors going to the solar panel, two connectors going to the battery, and two connectors going to your load. Okay, and that load has a one by itself. This allows, this controller allows your load to be controlled and regulated so that you you aren't subject to a lot of voltage going up and down by your battery, and definitely not your solar panel. You don't ever want to connect your load to your panel again, um, but you want to connect it to either your battery or your controller. And I recommend getting a controller that has three. So here here's an example. Hey, Doji, what's the last connector for that picture? It's ground. It's the one on the very right there is. Um, this one says sealed or flooded select. So I don't know what that's for. It's for if you have a sealed lead acid battery usually or a flooded lead acid battery. It, it depends on the battery chemistry. Okay, so, I, I, I don't know what that, how that connects. So okay, I'm glad you know that Taylor. I know that there are some of them that will have a, a last connector that will that'll be watching the temperature of your battery too. So that's another one. That, Damn. That last one's just a switch. Open, it's one, close, it's another. So, and so it's grounded someplace or something. Is that a switch? Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. It's just an open, it's just like a thing on your computer. You either ground it or you don't, and that selects the two. I see. Okay. The chemistries are a little different between steel and plug. So here, here's a, a charge controller that claims to be an MPPT. I have some doubts about this thing being MPPT type because it's kind of small. Usually you have a bigger heat sink inside of it to get rid of the heat and so forth. And, and you know, but but um, um, it was very low price, and so I thought, okay, low price, small size. You know, this is definitely a PWN controller. So I went to the test and looked at the. You know, I drained my battery and tried to charge it up to kind of see what this thing really does. And it turns out that that it was always charging my battery you know, almost nearly full, almost all the time. And so this thing was a very much a very efficient type of a controller. So it, it's made by probably some Chinese company, <laughs> is my guess, because it has no name anywhere. Um, but, but I bought it anyway because the price was right. And by George, this thing works like a charm. So I got it, and I tested it. And it does have the three, like I mentioned here, one to my panel, one to my battery, and, and one to my load. And I connected this guy up, and it, it's a charm. So, so I like it. And in spite of where it was made, it seems to work really nicely. Um, so here's one made by Renji. Anybody who knows this name, Renji, 
has a lot of trust in these guys. Renogy makes probably the best solar. I have not tried it, so maybe you guys could be the guinea pig to try it for me. I don't know. It's got the three ports, like I mentioned, the solar, the battery, and the load. So I'm anxious to see how this works. And this has got some other fun features too, like for instance, it's got a, you know, a built-in um, regulator. So it's, I've got a USB port here and some other five volt thingies and it's kind of fun to try out. So I don't know, maybe it, it, it works, maybe it doesn't. I'll have to figure this out and get back to you later. Anyway, so I'm not getting ahead of you. Can I ask yeah, yeah, sure. questions about that? Um, like about this one I'm here? Not getting ahead of you. you mentioned ham friendly. I'm assuming that means noise. Many of us remember uh, Jason Jensen when he got literally run out of his house uh, after having his solar for the dinner because he couldn't hear his HF anymore. Where does the noise come from? Does it come from the panels? Does it come from the converters? Uh, does it come from the controller? What does it come from? That's a very good question. So Carl's asking that some of these, some of this um, solar equipment generates a lot of noise, uh, especially on HF, and, and he's asking well, where the noise comes from. Number one, your panels will never put out any HF hash. It will never put out any RF noise of any kind. But your charge controller might. Um, from what I can tell so far, that, that this Chinese controller that I have here that claims to be MPPT, I can't detect any noise. I've only tried it on four different bands, but so far nothing. And I haven't really looked at it on my analyzer to know for sure, because my spectrum analyzer would tell me right away if I've got spikes and that sort of thing, and that would be telling. The, the Renogy thing, great name and solar stuff, right? It's got a really strong hash on 80 meters. Yeah, that's what mine does too. That does it on 80 Remember meters? Remember, we, we had to throw a blanket on my panels during uh, the day to figure out where the hash was coming from, but who uses 80 meters during the day? So, <laughs> yeah. so the trade-off was you don't use 80 meters during the day, let them charge up during the day, and, and at night, you don't have a hash. So one thing Carl found out was that he had he he, he saw that there was 80 meters of hash, and but during the day he didn't need his chart, uh, his um, solar panel, so he just covered it up. But one thing that you might want to do is during the, during the even though you're only using the charge controller at during the daytime to charge your battery, still if the load is going through your charge controller, it still is going to put out some hash. So you might want to get a transfer switch to switch that over from. Your, from your radio going to your battery instead of your radio going to your charge controller. And yeah, that, that, was just, that was just a test, really, is all it was. So it was just a test. We still let it charge out. We don't throw the blanket over. Rob? We're just troubleshooting. Uh, so if you snap some ferrite chokes on the cables, the wires that come in from the solar panels as close to the controller, the charge controller as possible, you can eliminate about 90% of it. So Rob says you, if you snap some ferrite chokes onto your, your controller uh, wires, that you can probably get rid of most of it. Um, That's assuming that you're not using microcontroller, yeah. micro inverters on your panels. I'm talking about yeah, so, you typical know, setups like what you're talking about. And, and to me, that has been largely successful, but not completely. But I agree. And, and in fact, what I, when I do like to put like ferrite beads like Rob's talking about, instead of just clamping the ferrite beads on here, what I like to do is, is wrap them a couple times in the bead and then have the bead clamp right onto the you know, the place where it's going to be able to get several loops in here. And that seems to work out for me anyway better. And you're, you're going to have to find out your own experience about how to get rid of the hash if you do notice that there's a lot of RF noise coming from your contr controller. Yeah, it's not going to come from your battery. It's not going to come from your panel. But this is the noise source. Go ahead. Is that, is that um, Orion? I can't. Maybe. Maybe. It was last time I saw it. I was going to ask. Have you noticed if uh, PWM or MPPT, which one might be less noisy, RF noisy? Okay, so Ryan's asking which one do I think is noisier, the MPPT or the PWM, and I don't know. I've seen noise on both. I've seen both be just as clean as, as gold, so I don't know which one is more generation noise generating. I, I don't know. What, what I found is the cheaper the better, so, the cheaper the worse. So um, Doug's experience is that the cheaper it is, the worse it is. <laughs> so there you go, Mike. So is there a specification uh, printed on the literature for the charge controller <laughs> so, so, for RF noise? So, it, it, so Mike is asking us if there's any specification on the charge controller um, data sheet, whether there's any, how much RF noise there is. I have never seen that, okay? I bet you ask Dave, he's probably got a YouTube video on it. Yeah, yeah maybe Dave Kessler has something like that, I don't know. 
let's see, so here's a technical data sheet for this thing that I just bought. All right, here we go, here we go. I'm impressed that you can read that without losses. Oh man, and I need it too, yeah. Well, I mean, besides, it's, you know, it's not only small, okay, but it's in Chinese, so I'm struggling here. <laughs> Yeah, it it, uh, it really doesn't say here. It says Carl opened up a can of worms. <laughs> well, it would be kind of nice if they did say, right? Oh, look, 80 meters. You know, you know, minus 20 dB, dBm, pretty bad. And uh, yeah, you don't want to get that controller. No, I, it doesn't say anything like that, and I wouldn't expect it to. I mean, it's bad advertising, right? Well, anyway, but not not that I know of. So. All right. It's okay to apply the load directly to your battery. In fact, many times it does. And that, that, that's what this energy thing does expect you to do. So this charge controller expects you to uh, have, the, have one going to the one port to get dedicated to the solar panel, but the other one can be parallel with your battery and your load. And, and that's okay to do, okay? Because then you know your your battery can be regulated right along with your load. Uh, again, I like the three-port version better because then you're allowing this charge controller to regulate both your battery and your load separately. And to me, they have different demands, and that's why I like that. But anyway, I, I, I didn't pay much for this. <coughs> Was there another hand? Okay. Um, just don't apply the load to the panel, please. You're going to see disastrous results. Um, there are different battery types too. I'm just going to mention really quickly here. I promised I wouldn't go over half an hour. Look, we're almost there. Don't blame me though. You guys are asking the questions. Okay, so if it possible, use a deep cycle battery, but there are some good exceptions. And I actually brought a, an exception that's a really good solution for to a deep cycle battery. But if, if available, use one. Those are really nice because then you can, you know, use it quite a bit for ham radio uses. You can take it out somewhere and and just sink the current and away you go for quite a while before you have to recharge it. Um, Gary? I would suggest using two six volt batteries to keep your place with better and don't have much longer. So Gary re recommends having two six volt batteries instead of one 12 volt battery. Okay, thanks. So t today's, t um, and there are many battery types you can buy today, okay? Some of the more common, common ones include the sealed lead acid, the absorbed glass matte battery, those are quickly going out of style. We also have um, lithium ion, which also are quickly going out of style. We have the lithium polymer batteries. Those are coming and going. But anyway, they're becoming um, more, you're, you're seeing them more and more. The, the one that's really coming into focus now are, are the um, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And that's the one you see in the picture there. I brought one here with me today. See, once again, Anderson connector. In fact, this one came with the Anderson connector because these guys at Miami Power are pretty smart and they have almost all their batteries are already pre-connected with Anderson connectors. Anyway, I love this battery because it's what, nine amp hours, and yet, you know, this is very light. This is these um, lithium pho um, um, ferrophosphate. Anyway, I, um, I always think of ferro fer um, ferrophosphate danger. But anyway, so um, lithium, um, iron phosphate batteries are so light compared with the ones of the same amp hour, same capacity um, battery types for like sealed lead acid and so forth, but yet they pack a punch too. Um, there are, there's another reason I like about these, um, these batteries here is that they have a large inrush current. So if you ever get like, some of you might have a, a, an ICOM 2730A, it's a mobile radio, right, dual band radio. Very nice radio, I love it. I'm glad Karen's not here tonight because she has one and she she doesn't like me to bad mouth her radio. Okay, but I love it, I, I do like it. The, the only bad thing about that radio is a huge inrush. And that, in other words, when you turn that thing on and you push that PTT, suddenly it takes that current and it sinks it big time. It's like a short circuit just for an instant, but it's long enough to turn off the voltage. And so therefore, when it does that, well, the radio never turns on. So she could never use her radio with a regular lead acid battery. 
she has to use something different. And so I, I gave her a power supply that, that sinks a lot of inrush really good. So she does that really well. But also, um, this is ideal for a radio like that. It, it, it can handle a really uh, deep inrush current right off the bat. You sink a lot of current, its voltage will go down just a little bit. It stays within the margin in 11 and a half or higher. Very nice battery. So highly recommend it, but you pay for it too. These Viano power batteries are not cheap. Like the one in the picture right here, $800 for that battery. Uh, this one is only 300 but still 300 bucks for a battery. Well, thank goodness it was gifted to me, so I didn't have to pay for this <laughs> Otherwise, I probably wouldn't even have anything to demonstrate to you tonight. But I am going to demonstrate how this works. So I have with me here my uh, Yesu 857D, and heaven knows this sinks a lot of current, and I'm going to connect it up to my battery here. There we go. And it turned it on, so I left it on. But you know what else I'm going to do? I, I'm, I'm actually going to bypass this. I'm going to take this battery off of my radio, and I'm actually going to use a charge controller and see if it works. I'll use this Chinese one here because it's sitting here and it's got everything all connected up. Let's see, battery to battery, here we go. Yeah. I connect it up. Sure enough, it's turning on. And I'll connect it to my radio here. There we go. So it senses there's a load on this thing now. So if I run it right now without my solar panel, it should work OK. All right. But just for grins, I'm going to connect my solar panel anyway. So I happen to uh, purchase these solar panels from Wish. Okay, you need to be careful if you ever go shopping on Wish, all right? <laughs> because those guys will rip you off big time. And this thing came with such a low price, it was like, it's too good to be true, right? So I thought, oh, why not? I'll check it out. If it doesn't work, I wasn't out of a lot of money. But this works. <laughs> well, sort of. So, so it was advertised for 200 watts for this panel, OK? And of course, nothing this tiny is ever going to be 200 watts. But I thought, well, I'll, I'll try it, right? So I actually put it to the test. And it, it, these things actually put out 80 watts. There's two of them. So there. These things will put out 80 watts, which even 80 watts, I was amazed. So for the that combined? I for it, I, I'm, I'm, it, it was worth it. Is it 80 watts combined? Yes. It, yeah. Yeah, these are two together, so 80 watts combined, thanks. How much were they? They're about $55. For both? Yeah. Yeah, they come as a package. They're already wired together, so I'm just going to put these here. You think this light is strong enough to? Well, probably not. But I'm going to hook them up anyway. You should use your sunny disposition. <laughs> Did you vote for me? There we go. Oh, so my panel just came disconnected here. There we go. All right, so it's so I've got a panel, I've got a battery, and um, I've got a load on here. So this is kind of how I want to hook it up if I'm out in the desert going someplace, because that, that's this way. It's the, the radio isn't exclusively using my battery; it's also getting some energy from the um, panel to my battery, so I can charge it while I'm using it too. So I'm going to turn on my radio here, see how much it's going to sink in my. Do you want us all to bring our phones up? Turn our lights on? Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and zero JI. Anybody out there willing to give me a signal check, please? Maybe if I extend the antenna. Volume up. Yeah, I tried the volume down earlier. Okay, and zero JI. Anybody out there? Rich, 
Richard? You're sounding pretty good. I haven't heard you for a long time. How come you're not in our club meeting? <laughs> well, you know, it's been a secret that we've been keeping here, but it is tonight over here at the Orem City Council Chamber Room. jump off then. Anyway, great to hear you, Richard. Thanks. And this is Katie on Zero J.I. But this is how I would hook it up if I was in a desert. Go back to the microphone here. If I'm out portable with my car and so forth, this is all I need. And this is my HF radio. And so I've got the antenna only connected to my VHF side because you can hear the repeater and so forth. But this is, since this is an HF radio as well, I can just connect this thing up to a little tripod and have my antenna go for it. And then away I go. But <clears throat> The question people, the hardest pet question people ask me is, well, so how much power do I need for this radio? <sighs> let me cover that. Glad you asked. Before I do though, let me just give you a couple tips about batteries. Number one, don't connect batteries together. You can, if you can make sure that the batteries you connect together, number one, are in parallel, are, in, are exactly the same type, go for it. I don't recommend that still because if the batteries are different or different levels of charge from each other, okay, your charge controller can't tell which battery needs the most, and it's going to give both of them the same amount of charge, and that can actually destroy the battery with the higher charge. So, I recommend never connecting two batteries together. Go ahead. What? Well, uh, well, like mentioned using two six volt. And if you use two six volt, you have the same um, problem and the same solution. You can do that. So, so there, there is, and I'll, and I'll actually get, offer a solution to that very thing. Um, don't connect different batteries together if they have different nominal voltages. Please don't, especially if they're one's 12, one's 24, one's 48. You get the picture, right? Um, but, oh gosh, no, gee, I, my radio runs at 13.8 volts. Is it safe to connect a 12 volt battery to it? Well, yeah, okay, 12 volt and 13.8 is the same thing. Because 12 is in the um, operating, tolerance range of 13.8 if you do the math. But yeah, don't let that worry you. 12 volts is just fine for 13.8 volt well, things. Do you have a question? No. <clears throat> I love it when people stretch their club me. Okay. Also, don't connect them together if they're different types. Uh, again, the, your charge controller might want to go out and detect what kind of a battery type of it is. And if you're going to confuse the charge controller, you're just going to destroy your battery. Um, if they're different capacities, one's a 100 amp hour battery, and another one is 55 amp hour, you're going to run into problems. Gary? Also, don't mix up brands. <coughs> I used to work, I used to work with, in, a, in a different bunch and used for batteries all the time, and we never wanted to mix batteries. Um, even though it's, it may be, they both may be AGM or whatever type of battery, if they're different brands, I would not recommend mixing them. Don't, don't connect them together if they're different brands. Uh, I, I did not include that, and thank you for that great point, too. I appreciate that. Now, if you, the, you can connect batteries in parallel if they are the same type and you know that they have the same charge level. And so what, what you can do is, if, if like what I have at my house, and I have a bank of batteries, um, they're all exactly the same type, same voltage, everything. They're the same brand of battery. Um, they're the same capacity, and they're all in parallel. But what happens is, because I, they're all in parallel 24-7, they all drain the same amount and they charge the same amount. When you do that, then your charge controller doesn't, doesn't get uh, confused that way. If you can guarantee that, you're good to go in a day one. What if they start getting old and one of them starts to go bad? Yeah, and then, then you've got problems, and then you've got to kind of monitor that. So I would pay to, so what day is saying, well, what if one of them starts going bad? You know, you, you, it's hard to tell. And you have to kind of monitor your batteries and keep a watch on that. Um, you just, James. You also need to separate your batteries if they're in parallel. So you can eliminate a bad, bad battery by itself. You're not going to be able to know. 
you're not going to be able to test the battery if you have to leave them in parallel. So if you can dial up your batteries apart and then test them, you can do that. Yep. Dang, James. So kind of back to what Alan was saying, if you have a battery go bad, it's not usually a good idea to replace that battery with a new one because now you're in this sort of out of sync situation, right? Because that new battery can charge faster, drain faster, those kind of things. So your back's sort of in that same boat. It's like buying tires for a, a four-wheel drive car, right? You don't replace one tire. That's right. You don't just replace one tire. Exactly. Same, and, same idea. As a matter of fact, you know, this is one of the reasons people hate to get into solar uh, with their homes because they know that if they do solar that has the storage um, option, that means they've got to have this battery bank in their garage, okay? And if you have that, that means every few years you've got to replace all the batteries. And let me tell you, that's not cheap. Um, it's like, why did I go through all this expense of, if I'm going to save all this money on electricity? Did you have a hand Ryan or somebody here? No? What? Yeah. No. Where's your hat? Was it? All right. Yeah. Okay, and also don't leave your batteries charging forever, but there are exceptions to that too, unless you're using a smart charger. <coughs> so I've got um, a, a really smart charger at home, it's by um, EP Ever, and that um, charge controller is not cheap, it's an MPPT, but it's smart in that it knows that that, you know, what it needs to do to keep the batteries trickled and charged because it's got steps that it uses to know how, how much it needs to charge and so forth. It's a very, very smart thing. With, with, a, with a charge controller like that, you can keep your batteries on 24-7 without any problem at all. Um, if you don't have a smart charger, I wouldn't risk it. Just take it off when you're not using it. Please do not dispose of batteries in your trash can. <laughs> I think we already know that. Okay, don't keep batteries that show any signs of leaking or bloating. All right, I'm not going to even go across that. Now, there are connector types. Um, many um, solar panels come with MC4 connectors. They look like this. I was going to bring mine, or I forgot to, but that's okay. Picture's right here. And, um, uh, but I, you know, be, be, being me, I tend to convert everything I have to Anderson's, and so I, I do that. In fact, on my RV, I've got the MC4s like usual, and I just have Anderson's going from there to, to my um, charge controller. Anyway, let's, <clears throat> just kind of putting it all together here, what I want to do, and, and see, we all want to be this guy right here, uh, except maybe a little younger, and be able to get out there in the, in the public and get our radios up in the air and going. Solar, he's completely independent. That's kind of nice. So if you have multiple panels, you can connect them in parallel if they have the same output voltage in order to increase your voltage. Uh, you can connect them in series to increase the voltage. But try and connect the identical panels together, if at all possible. You can do different panels if you really know what you're doing, okay? So um, there are things to watch out for. Measure your open circuit voltage and your so short circuit currents. And yes, the solar panel, you can actually short them right together and you won't have any problem, there won't be a fire, don't worry about that. Um, because that is a way to measure a solar panel output, is by actually shorting them out. Unlike a battery, don't do that to a battery. Okay, so back to the original question, and we're, we'll end with this. How much power do we need? How much panel do I need? So here I've got my Yaesu A57D, and it lists 23 amps maximum when I'm tra transmitting on HF, okay? But I'm not going to be transmitting 24-7. I'm not going to be transmitting with my key pressed the entire time, putting, you know, drawing 23 amps, 20, you know, the whole time. So probably 50% duty cycle. You know, do I? Um, someone's beating me. Sorry. That's no reflection on you. Uh, <laughs> sure it's not. All, the way. all right, all right. So. That was very quick. Let's say that you're only drawing about 11 and a half amps on the average because of your duty cycle. Okay, so I have an, a, a tuner also I'm going to use with my radio, about a half an amp draw. My laptop I'm going to use to because I want to log or look up something. About 6.6 .6 amps for that, which includes my inverter, by the way. Inverters are very inefficient little pieces of machinery. But anyway, 6.6 .6 amps is what I'm measuring from line at home. And I've got a little LED stick because I want to do some nighttime work as well. All right. So the total draw I'm having here is about 18.8 .8 amps. That's what I'm measuring. And that means I'm going to need 12 volt you know, supplies, 18.8 .8 amps. That's going to be about 225.6 watts. 
And that means that my hourly wattage that I'm trying to consume here is going to be 225.6 watt hours. That's watts times hours. That's the amount of energy that I'm using. So that there it is repeated. Now, that means assuming that I'm using a PWM controller, so I've got a kind of cheapy, 75% efficient, not bad, okay. That means I'm going to need um, a, a 225.6 watt hours divided by that efficiency to give me a 300 watt solar panel. Well, I don't have a 300 watt solar panel lying around, okay. So I, maybe I'll have three 100 watt ones I can just quickly buy from Costco. They have them on sale right now for 100 bucks each. And uh, you can use those um, and charge, charge one of them for three hours, for instance. So I do that. And those three hours, I'm going to need a battery that can handle, therefore, 18.8 .8 amps times those three hours, which is going to give me 56.4 amp hours. So that's what my battery needs to be able to, to draw supply. But to need, in order to keep the battery from draining completely, because you don't want to drain the battery totally, you're only partially. That means I'm going to get a deep cycle battery and one that's going to um, go way past that 56.4 amp need that I have. Therefore, 100 amp hours seems pretty good because that means I'm draining 56.4% of that battery, okay? And that's, that's quite a bit for a battery. So that means your charge controller needs to handle 18.8 .8 amps too, so I'd recommend a 30 amp controller about that. I didn't bring a 30 amp controller with me here, but you know, you can find one of those are pretty inexpensive, especially if it's PWM on Amazon. So this is my shopping list, therefore. Um, so the basic needs. That, that doesn't include any cable. Go ahead, James. Go back one slide, will you? Yeah, right there. So your energy need for one hour is 225 watt hours, yes. right? So if I have a 100 watt panel charging for three hours, I'm losing ground, right? Yes, so you are. It takes are. me three hours to get one hour's worth of power. That is correct. Yes, so you're that's losing something you've got to think about as well. Yes. Yeah, the inefficiencies are always going to kill you, and that, that, is, that is true. Thanks. Okay, so what I'm needing then, and this is not including the cabling, so I'm assuming I have my cables, my Andersons, my, my you know, 10 gauge wire and so forth. I need one 100 watt solar panel, one 100 amp hour battery, and one 30 amp PWM 12 volt charge controller. And charge controllers do come in different voltages, you've got to be careful about that too. Alternately, what I can do is I can get two 50 watt panels, or like, um, 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 Dalen was, or sorry, Gary was suggesting here, I can get two 50 amp hour batteries. Or in his case, he's saying six um, volt batteries instead of 12. I can do that differently too. So here I can get two 50 amp hour um, 12 volt batteries. And then one 20 amp MPP um, type of a 12 volt charge controller instead. Maybe a little more expensive, but different way to go. And you can accomplish the same, same kind of thing. So. Finally, just go have fun. You know, all this math and stuff, yeah, you can do it, you can figure this out. I'll make this slideshow available to you if you want to do your own math and such. And it, it, should, be, it should work for you approximately, it's not perfect. Will this, you know, work on a cloudy day? Yeah, it will. You know, can I, where can I purchase these things? Amazon's good, there's many places you can go to a Walmart, for heaven's sakes. Can I dispose of batteries? At Interstate Battery, for instance, uh, several places you can. So if you got any working solar panels you want to get rid of, hey, just give them to me. Bring them to a club meeting. Thanks. Mm -hmm. you know, can I mention one thing? Carl, go field, ahead. field day. My son has five panels on his, on his trailer. Oh, he's got five panels on his trailer. He's got three lipo, but I don't know how many half hour batteries are the big, the big $800 ones. We ran all night long and only ran him down to like 50 percent wow. running 100 watts all night long on, on, on the radio so 100 watt efficient. radio all night long only ran 50 percent down yeah that's great thanks hey for a trailer like my son bought a, a solar panel for 50 bucks and he hooked it directly to his batteries on his trailer would he need a controller on that yes, yes sir yes. That's, that's a thundering yes so he could destroy his batteries. Yeah. Well, you can damage your batteries. Right, you can boil them right down to nothing. Yeah, you can start off fire. Yeah, you can you can actually cause damage in many ways. So, and your wires might be actually the first thing to go. If you see your wires starting to glow red.
Thirty. Well, I will now turn the time over to Brent. <laughs> oh, he's the door prize. <laughs> yes, I am the door prize tonight. Congratulations, you win one hour with me for a week. Okay, um, can I have Nate? Is it Nate or Nathan? Either one. Nate or Nathan, come up. Brent, I didn't get one. Oh, you did not get one? I didn't see this. Yep, I'm here. Okay, how many hands do you have up? So one, keep your hands up if you did not get a ticket. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Nine, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many eight, can we eight, have? Eight. Eight. Who said nine? Well. Yeah, that was my fault for. It's because I had two hands up. Okay, thanks. Okay, right, everyone, hands. this is my new pal, Nate. He is going to help me with door prizes tonight. He will keep me honest. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know, maybe. Okay, Nate, so what we're going to do is we're going to give these a good mix. I'm going to have you reach in and then grab a ticket. And then you're going to say really loudly the last three numbers that are on the ticket. Can you do that? One more. Seven, zero, one. Oh wait, hold on one second. We might still throw that one back in. We need one more? Okay, so we're gonna start. Really over. Was <laughs> I told you we'll start one. We'll start over again. Sorry. Wait, Brett. I yeah. told you nine. Huh? I told you nine. Uh-huh. Okay, is so there anyone else that did not receive a ticket before we begin? Wait, who went the last one? Okay. It's a redo. It's a redo because we didn't have everyone in. Can you clarify what the present or the prizes Thank you, yes. Okay. There's a lot of stuff that I picked up real quick. It is not the solar panels. <laughs> and it is not the battery. But it is the smart. Of course, we have the ARRL membership, which is waiting patiently for you, Trevor. And then, of course, we have the flashlight. Or the, the club, flash, club flashlight. These are our three, three, uh, three door prizes tonight. And then, of course, we have two main prizes. But we'll start with these first. Okay. Hey, he's got one already. <laughs> and that was my number. <laughs> Seven zero two. Seven zero two. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got seven zero two? The last four three. Did you leave it early? Oh, wait, seven zero two, is that me? That's me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I actually won. We do. I won. Noji, I won. Mate, I freaking love you. Hold up, Brett. I won. Yes. Mate, you are my hero. Okay. Composure, composure. Okay, Nate. Do it again. Seven two two. Seven two two. All right. So we've got the tarp and the flashlight. I'll take. I just want to win the battery. Look over here. Look over here. Yeah. Hold up, the flashlight. And then I light in. There we go. I think I'll take eighty bucks. Okay, I'll take that one. Okay, this is for the tarp. Six nine four. And that would be You know the assist one here. Right? No, it's four. I'm going to hold this so I want to come over here and hold this up in here. Okay, in this box, we have a new radio. Is it programmed, OG? Yes. Fully programmed. Does not come with free installation. But of course, Hawker's J-Pole does come with free installation. Is it programmed? <laughs> yes, Hawker's J-Pole is programmed. Yes. 
big one. Set that down here. Okay, so as always, what we're going to do, the first person to get drawn will have their choice between the Pop J-Pole or the radio. And then the runner-up, well, they'll get like time left. <laughs> Up real good. Seven one two. Seven one two. All right. Good job. All right. You know, I have to admit, I think this is the first time someone actually chose Carl's J pole first. That's because he's smart. It's worth more than He's like, wait a minute, it's Carl here on with the radio. <laughs> it's worth more than the radio. It is worth more than the radio. Yeah. One more time. 726. 726. Oh, well. 726. Does it leave early? Not right here. <laughs> wait, seriously? Yeah. Okay. If I turn it upside down, it's a danger for <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want that radio. He doesn't want that radio. Hold it up here. Hold it up here. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Did you go. win it last week? I will sell this. All right, congratulations to all of our North Price winners. Hey, bucks. let's give a big round of applause for Nate. Yeah. Let's give him an even bigger round of applause because thanks to him, I actually won something tonight. Yay. Yeah. Hey, you did awesome. Yeah. All right, now we'll turn the time back over to this guy. It's a chat. <laughs> All right, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. We got out of here, it looks like five minutes early, but uh, we will be uh, going over to Apollo Burger tonight to do, uh, you know, a little eyeball q so again. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to see you there. Um, otherwise, thanks for coming out. Uh, we'd like to have you stack the chairs, make sure that there's a chair with wheels on the bottom. And uh, we'll see you next month at the DIY night over at the Friendship Center.